Forsake me not, O Lord, my God, be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O God, O Lord, my strong salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us together acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves as we celebrate in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I myself am convinced about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to admonish one another. But I have written to you rather boldly in some respects to remind you, because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, in performing the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering up of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast in what pertains to God, for I will not dare to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, to lead the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have finished preaching the gospel of Christ. Thus I aspire to proclaim the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on another's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do, now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that, when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their home. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note, promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then another said to him, And and you, how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe it was several years ago I was watching a news article around this time of year, around the uh, Thanksgiving uh, holidays and as we are approaching um, Advent season, Christmas season. And they were talking about uh, Amazon and, and just some of the things that Amazon does during the, the holidays, you know. And one thing that just struck me, I guess that was um, just unbelievable, it was that Amazon, and, and I, I'm not exactly sure if this is the exact status, but it was something like this, that it, worldwide, during like the December month, they probably, it says that they process 500 boxes in one second. 500 boxes, 500 orders in one second around the world, which is is mind boggling to think about that. But it really speaks to kind of our our modernization and globalization, um, that efficiency, efficiency is everything. You know, efficiency is is king, you know, that it's, we're always working, it seems, um, with technology. What's the goal of technology? Efficiency. Now, there's, there's certainly a, um, a paradox in that insofar as it seems like we seem to be busier than ever, and yet we have some of the greatest technology. But that's another homily. The gospel this morning, uh, it's one of the, probably one of the most confusing gospels, I think, in all of Scripture. You have this uh, parable that our Lord gives, and I mentioned Yesterday, there's always a twist, right, to the parable that doesn't make sense. This dishonest steward squanders his master's property, and he's going to lose his job. And so he's thinking to himself, he's thinking ahead. He's being very prudent. He's thinking ahead. Well, I'm too ashamed to beg. I'm not strong enough to dig. How will I have others invite me into their homes? How will I still be welcomed in the community, if you will. I know what I'll do. I'll squander more of my master's property, right? And I'll cut the debtors in half, right? And they'll love me for that. And they'll invite me into their homes whenever I lose my job. It's just like, it doesn't make sense to read it. But then what's even more, I guess, puzzling is that the master commends him for squandering more of his money, right? But that's the point of the God, that's the point of the, the parable, is that this dishonored steward was looking ahead. He was looking ahead and he was planning for the future. And what Jesus is trying to make the, the point is that the people of this world, very worldly and secular people, are very good about planning for the future. They're very efficient, right? They'll work their tails off, you know, uh, 70, 80 hours a week, in order to have that nest egg, that retirement plan, to have everything lined up so that they'll be comfortable in this world. 
And he's kind of, I guess Jesus our Lord is challenging us to, what if we put that kind of prudence and that kind of planning into eternal life? Because the true home that we're all welcomed in should ultimately be the home of heaven. Right? Our fathers, uh, in our father's uh, mansion, in our father's house, there are many dwelling places. Our Lord says that in John's gospel. But how well are we planning, right? Are we being efficient? Are we using the effort, I guess even a quarter of the effort, right? 15% of the effort we may put into the worldly concerns here on earth. Are we placing those also, most especially in our spiritual life, planning for the future, planning that God may welcome us into his home. Again, our Lord is just basically um, contrasting, right, the, the way the people of this world and the effort they put into efficiency and planning and uh, for their future, can we use some of that? Can we use that same effort to plan for the true future, right? Because as they all say, right, you can't take anything with you, right? Nothing in this world will be able to hang on to, not even our own family members in the end. And so how well are we placing that effort into our true home, which is the home of heaven? This is why our Lord gives this parable today, right? And commends kind of the prudence of the dishonest steward. Can we use that same effort for not for the things of this world and the efficiencies of this world, but really for the world that is to come, which is our eternal homeland, that God may welcome us into his house. So may God bless you and may God be with you. Amen. Together, let us stand. And seeking to plan for our own eternal destination, asking the Lord for prudence to be able to use the gifts God has given us to plan for our eternal life. We turn to him with our petitions and prayers this morning. We pray for our church and for all those who are called to lead us, that they may do so with prudence, uh, with courage, with wisdom. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our world, especially for peace in our world. We pray for countries that may be experiencing oppression or tyranny or any kind of um, sin against religious liberty. We pray to the Lord. We pray, Lord, uh, for all those who are in need in whatever way, materially, spiritually, that the Lord may answer their prayers according to his will and in his time. We pray to the Lord. We pray that our hearts may be changed, that we may convert ever more deeply in following our Lord's will, in the prudence and the courage and the planning for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for uh, vocations, specifically to the priesthood and religious life, for our own diocese, for young, those young people who are discerning their vocation. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are traveling, especially the pilgrims uh, to Rome, that for their safety and for their protection, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intention of this Mass this morning, for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for all of our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God, we entrust to you all of these intentions that through the sacred heart of Jesus, that you may answer them in your will and according in, in your time and according to your will, as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me shall have life because of me, says the Lord. Let us pray.
May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared for your gift, for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a wonderful day today.